Hi chaps, John here, Mycorrhizis. Welcome to Mycorrhizis Workshop once again. Um, in this video, I am hoping to show you how our new um, micro receiver, the twin ESC uh, five channel receiver with um, stabilization, or as we, as it's termed, SR3X. I don't know what that particularly stands for, but that's what the manufacturer calls it. So uh, we'll go with that. Um, so what I'm hopefully going to show you today is firstly how to download the software application, the app um, that uh, is used uh, to allow us access to all of the settings within the receiver. Um, and then we're going to take a look at the settings themselves um, I don't I, I really only know the settings that are um, appropriate for the the Percy kit that we do um, so uh, hopefully it'll show you the basics and you can explore even further and uh, and find out more about what it can do um, and what you can affect on your builds um, We'll also go through the uh, how to how to plug everything in, um, so you know how to uh, how to actually uh, get the receiver um, plugged into your computer and get the uh, the settings updated, um, and uh, then that that should be us done. I think uh, with the receiver that you would have got if you've purchased one already, um, you should have received, certainly if it's just the receiver that you've got, um, then this is the sort of thing that you get. You've got the receiver sitting here. You've got some um, servo, uh, double-sided servo pads there to uh, enable you to attach that to your aircraft. Um, and then you've got this little unit here, which is, essentially the uh, the gateway um, to your computer um, and I'll show you how all that plugs in a little bit later uh, you also get a, uh, a guide on how to bind uh, your receiver to your transmitter it's pretty simple um, and also a, a little bit about the LED lights that appear on the uh, on the board as well um, and then there's a little bit down here about the programming and it really is just a, a very basic synopsis um, but it gives you a link there um, to actually download the um, uh, download the app so that's what we're going to do now if I can share my screen just have a look da, da, da. let's go back so if we go back to full screen, I should be able to share my screen now. Uh, there we go. Oh, we have the MicroAces website. Fantastic. So um, you can either type in the link that's provided in the, um, in the instructions, or if you go to one of the flight packs, so this is where the flight packs are kept. If I scroll down... There we go, our twin uh, twin ASC flight packs. I'll just click on one of those. And if we just zoom down to the bottom, we've got download links. And we've got uh, a link to the instructions that we've got on the printed out on the board here. Or we've got this uh, crossover RX PC interface. So let's click on that. And immediately um, the link starts downloading. Now, because the, the, the software at the moment that is written by the manufacturers um, has not been uh, registered with um, one of the software things, <laughs> I'm not particularly technical on this, um, then uh, it's going to come up with a few messages trying to warn you to, uh, to, to not install this. But uh, I've, I'm happy with the installation. I've had a number of people install it. And uh, everything seems to be working fine. So, uh, um, so you can see this message down bottom left here. MXO.zip is not a commonly downloaded and may be dangerous. Um, just click click the up arrow and keep. And then it's uh, obviously mine's very quickly downloaded. So I'm just going to click on that arrow again, and I'm going to click on open. 
So here we go. And I'm using two screens here, so <laughs> that's why that's being moved over. Um, so let's just reduce that down there. So that's my application now. That's what's been downloaded. So I'm just going to uh, double click on that. And then Windows is complaining uh, again. Um, and it uh, gives you no other option than don't run. Um, but you've also got this option, option up here, more info. Um, so if I click on that, it gives me the application. The publisher is unknown. I guess that's when you register your software, the, um, that, that's when the, uh, when the publisher becomes known and will give you that information. So run anyway. Okay, so now that's come up with a message which you can't see on screen there, I don't think, or maybe you can. Uh, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Yes. Okay, so select the language to use during the installation. Well, obviously, I'm going to plump for English, but obviously, if you're not English and you want it in another language, you can, by all means, make the selection from uh, German and French. There we go. <laughs> Never looked at that before. So there we go. And the license agreement. So if you're feeling um, a little bored, you can read through that. Accept. Next. And then it's just giving you the location it's going to install the software in. And then I want to create a, uh, a desktop shortcut as well. So there we go. And install. And here we go. So let's just finish. There we go. All done. OK. So I've got a little error message come up saying no serial port. Uh, please make sure you've connected the adapter. So we haven't connected that at the moment. So I'm just going to click on OK. And uh, and up comes our tool. So there we go. Let's just let's just close all the others so we've got a clear look at it. So this is our our tool. Okay, and it's a it's a fixed size. Um, so this is our application. Um, we're not connected at the moment. So let's just. Um, let me just whilst that's there. Sorry about this. <laughs> there, I'm back. So let's take a look down on the billboard. Let's just pop this to one side. And so let's connect our device. We actually don't need that. This is this is something that you can do with the uh, the receiver in situ as well. You don't need to um, have it out of the model. As long as you've got access to plug this cable into this socket, like so, then uh, then you're good to go. Um, you can program it whilst it sits in the aircraft. Um, I've tried. I, I did ask whether you can actually have the battery connected at the same time. Um, I have tried it. It doesn't blow up. But um, it doesn't seem to connect to the to the PC. So anyway, I'm now going to grab my USB cable that's already connected to my computer. It's actually a, a laptop. Um, plug that in. So you can see everything lights up and flashes. And let's just go back and have a look at. There we go. So. Let's now hit the connect button. There we go. And we're connected. So we've got our, our tool up, uh, port description, silicon labs, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we've got um, our, our disconnect button. Um, we've got our check for updates. So if there's been an update to the uh, configuration tool, 
um, we can go and uh, get it there. And then we've got uh, our profile, which is our profile settings, um, the name of the product, the AR3201GD, which is the DSMX2 version. So if you've got the Futaba version or the FR Sky version, that should show there. Oh, and we've uh, we've got a new update. We will remind me later. We will install that. Um, so obviously the manufacturers are active on this particular product, which is which is good to know. Um, so we've also got things like MBUS um, settings here as well. I'm not going to touch any of those. Um, and then we've got some actions, some resets, some factory resets, and some save. So that save, I think, works on this particular page. Um, what I'm going to do, which is much more interesting, is go to uh, the SR3X um, page, which is the stabilization page. Um, and I love the tips here. The developer is so lazy to add some text here. We'll add the manual next time. So <laughs> I do like that. That's 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 good fun. <laughs> so um, looking at the SR3X, our stabilization, our model type is normal. But as you can see here, there is a huge, well, not huge, but there is a selection, a comprehensive selection of various model types. So you've got um, single power, wing, um, normal and reverse, V-tail, normal and reverse, and dual power wing, normal and reverse. Um, well, I've, I've kept mine on uh, uh, normal. Um, I guess we could, we could probably use dual power wing. Now, that might actually mean that it would start using the motors for uh, stabilization as well. And then you've got the uh, control... Uh, control control mod. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it uh, I can see here it, it says channel five. So I can actually um, move that channel if I want a channel six, channel seven, or channel eight, um, or I can switch it off entirely if I want um, in in these settings. So. Um, mounting type, so you've also got the ability to mount it horizontally or you can mount it on its edge as well. And we've got X, Y and Z axis direction. And as you can see here, I've got the X and Y, um, the, sorry, the X and Z reversed um, because of the way that we've oriented the receiver in the person. That's what's required. Then we've got the senses. So you've got, oh, well, maybe, maybe these things, the SRX3 Sense 1, Sense 2, is that it just, um, just uses the, uh, the, the one sense in the whole control situation. But anyway, um, it was just a thought, maybe not. Uh, so anyway, we've also got the ability on each of the axes to set the sensitivity of the um, of, um, of the stabilization. So it's a little dial system. So you can move around like that. Or you can actually I believe right? you could use the wheel, but we'll get involved. So anyway, Oh, you can use the up and down arrows on your keyboard. So there we go. That's what you can do. Up and down arrows. So, and you've got the two sense modes. So you've got sense one and sense two. So I've got uh, sense one set at 50, sense two as default set at 99. It does, it does go up to 125. So... Um, and then if we've made any changes, I'd hit the save button. So and then you've successfully saved the parameters. And that means it's updated the uh, the receiver as well, uh, if we've made any changes. So those are the settings that you can uh, uh, play with and alter for your um, uh, three axis stabilization. If we go on to the ESC, then um, this is essentially um, uh, to control the um, the differential thrust. So 
we've got um, the dual ESC and we can either switch it off so that we don't have any uh, differential thrust at all or we can have differential or centropy. Don't know what centropy is. <laughs> Maybe somebody can enlighten me. Um, and the uh, second ESC, which is actually on the uh, uh, one of the servo ports, um, we can actually uh, we can actually allocate to um, other ports on the uh, on the receiver. We've also got our differential rates. So this is basically setting the sensitivity for the differential. Um, so we can take that all the way up to one, two, four, I think it is. Um, but we've got it set at 30. So it's sort of, it's, uh, it's, it's not particularly high. Obviously, the greater the, the, the number, the higher the sensitivity of the differential thrust. So I'm guessing at one, two, five, you wiggle your whatever, whatever channel you happen to have the differential on and uh, it'll it'll zoom into action whereas at 30 it's sort of uh, at the at the ends of the travel of, of the movement of your stick so um the z gyro is off full course or midpoint um i guess that allows you to use the motors for um the stabilization as well uh, I haven't played with that, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, the differential channel. So I've got it set on the rudder, but you can set it on the aileron. Um, if you've seen previous videos, and we've mentioned that before. Um, so you can choose which, whether you're left stick or right stick, mode one, mode two, uh, you can uh, you can choose um, what, uh, what stick you want the differential to come alive on. Um, and then you've got a normal or reverse differential. Um, so you can you can uh, have it working either way, either with you or against you. Um, so uh, could allow for things like coordinated turns and that sort of thing. Um, especially if you haven't got ailerons, but you are using rudder, maybe. Um, and then once again, you've got your save um, to save the parameters. So um, you've also got a. Uh, a ports tab um i haven't played with that um i'm not entirely wrapping my head around that at the moment um you've got your uh firmware which just t tells you the uh the the information about uh, which version you're running um and then uh, some some binary code um in the uh, in the logs uh tab which, uh, so um oh and we haven't looked at the uh, the welcome tab um but uh that gives a, a little bit of an instruction um which i haven't uh looked through yet maybe i should but um so there we go so once we're happy with our settings and we've made changes um we can then disconnect so if i hit disconnect and then i just let's just there we go. Uh, let's go down to the billboard. So we can now just um, disconnect our receiver. And any updates we've made should have been transferred to it. So that's essentially how the whole thing operates. Um, so hopefully that gives you a really good idea of the uh uses you can put your little receiver to whether it be um in the percy build itself and actually um, trimming and setting up the percy um, to meet your requirements um, or it's for any other projects that you are uh, um, you're, you're actually building um, that may need a different setup to the one that we send out with as default with the uh, with the, the little twin ESC receiver. Uh, anyway, so that really uh, concludes and uh, goes over what I wanted to show you and what I actually know about this particular receiver, which, as you can see, is not that much. Um, but uh, I am sure 
uh, there are minds out there greater than mine um, that will have a, a, a better understanding. Um, please get in contact um, if you have uh, worked out some of the settings that could be uh, important or useful that I haven't covered. Um, and, uh, and also if uh, you're, uh, you're discovering new ways of using the, uh, the receiver as well. Um, be very interested to, uh, to know, find out, and it, it may well influence uh, what we do in the future uh, with, the, uh, with the receiver. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope it has been useful for you, and uh, I'll um, see you next time in the uh, next useful video that, uh, that we publish. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.